Hello everyone, today I am here with a literally huge filament monster. This is not a review video, it's my first time using it, I'll discuss the features of CRM4 and my user experiences. My main goal is to share the different projects I have done with this device with you. When I was going to buy a printer for the first time, I had two main criteria. One was that the printing area should be large. I wanted to be able to get as large single piece prints as possible. Secondly, the printer should be able to print with 50 micron precision. I had heard this information somewhere, I had read it, I was always looking at it, whether it can print 50 microns or not. As I learned about technology, I also learned that these features need to be evaluated more broadly. Nevertheless, I always had a desire to use a printer with a large printing area for big projects. CRM4 is exactly such a 3D printer. It's a device with a nice appearance and features. Its body is entirely metal, it has quite a sturdy structure, it's used on a flexible magnetic plate. The printing area is 45 x 45 cm and the maximum printing height is 47 cm. Three important points exist in devices with such a large printing area. Firstly, the mechanism that provides the movement of the plate. Two linear rails were used in CRM4. This is important for stable movement. There's a big Y-axis motor in the back. The belts on both sides are connected to this motor. As the table is movable, these supports are as important in the Z-axis to prevent vibration and oscillation as the linear rails are in the Y-axis. Creality had given this a very cool name. The name of this system is Golden Triangle. These triangles connect from the peak points to the main body and reduce the effects of vibrations at high printing pressures. Of course, one of the parts affecting the vibration is the printing head. Here, Creality's Light and Sprite extruder has been used. It's already a successful system. We've seen this extruder in many CR series as well. The third important part is leveling. The larger the build plate size, the harder it becomes to level. Especially if there is a manual system, leveling is automatically done with CR Touch in CRM4. We will also see how sufficient this leveling is. Now, printers with a large printing area are generally preferred for use in large and extensive projects. With this logic, I also took the printing of some parts that can be used in the hobby, decorative, functional and automotive sector. Those who follow the channel know that there are usually many printings on my desk. There are fewer this time because some of these went to their owners. We will see them in a moment, but let's start a review with the pieces we have here now. The lampshade you see was indeed printed in one piece. These are actually the black parts. The length of the black part is 41 cm. Since it's a single piece, it has no additional parts, which makes it look nice in its entirety. I encountered a stringing issue while printing the black piece. There can be many reasons for this problem. Stale filaments, insufficient cooling, incorrect printing settings, or large or poor quality nozzles. I used a 0.8 mm nozzle in this printing and did the printing with a layer thickness like 0.6 mm. The printer's cooling fan is also small. Well, when there are such mutually thin rising parts, stringing became inevitable. Anyway, I cleaned the threads with a craft knife. I burned the remaining thin pieces with a lighter and solved the problem. Print quality is okay. I know it's not a hard point to get a printing, but the printing quality of the cylindrical top part is quite nice. 
I do not really comprehend much about electrical connections, but at least I have adequate knowledge to connect the positive and negative terminals correctly. I know enough to at least plug a bulb into a socket, but I struggled quite a bit during this and encountered unexpected situations. Now I'm going to show you those as well. However, my goal filming this video was to display the production stages in a pleasant manner. I hope it's just the fuse that's blown. I'll do it again once more, and let us see what happens. Yes, it light again while it was open. If there is someone who knows about this subject, please inform me, because I researched but couldn't find a reason. If I made a reverse connection, the bulb would not light. Or when I turn on the switch, I would say it's okay if the fuse blows when the connection is completed. Very interesting. There is no problem when it's on. The moment I turn off the switch, it blows the fuses. Anyway, I think everything turned out pretty well when the switch was disabled. That single piece on the body, the white part, along with the red details I used on the cable and in the middle, I think I achieved quite a stylish and usable lighting. Another big print thing is this radio-controlled vehicle body you see. Let's call this a shell of a Dodge Challenger. 3D printers have started to play an important role in the production of radio-controlled vehicles. In the past, these types of products were typically ordered ready-made from the internet. Hobbyists would make small modifications on the main body or paint them slightly, or there were bodies made with very long handcrafted labor. However, with the involvement of 3D printers, hobbyists interested in this topic have also become quite relieved. Because both the design and production process have accelerated and serious freedom has been gained in this sector. Of course, the job doesn't end with taking the printings of these models. It's not easy to get this printing to this state. There is a very long labor process. But it's hard not to wonder how it was made like this. I'm relieving you of this curiosity right away. My dear friend Narish has a YouTube channel called Craft Channel. He does tremendous work. This Dodge Challenger project is indeed one of them. This project was not done with CRM4. But there is another very big project done entirely with CRM4, a gigantic catamaran speedboat. I was really amazed when I first watched this project on YouTube. The putty, sanding, painting, mechanical, electronic assembly after printing is such a long and labor-intensive process. Also, this model is not this big in its original form, maybe half, maybe a smaller model. Of course, all components are adjusted according to the smaller version. The entire internal system was officially redesigned for this boat and they found materials accordingly. They even had to manufacture them. After a month of work, this amazing project truly emerged. I would really like to thank Craft Channel for sharing these images with me. If you are interested in this and similar projects, you should definitely follow the channel. Even if you're not interested, follow it anyway. I'm not actually that interested in this topic, but watching your videos feels like therapy to me. Using a machine like CRM4 in such projects is a big advantage. Why? The fewer parts there are, the fewer joints there are while printing, both the durability will increase and your workload will decrease. Especially one of the most challenging points when doing paste sanding is these joint areas. Hiding transitions in these parts and making them smooth is more difficult compared to other surfaces. Otherwise, you can do it with a 3D printer with a 20 by 20 printing area of the same model, but your effort afterwards will be much greater. So, with a 3D printer, only these types of model vehicles? It can be printed. How about enlarging the scale? 
If vehicle bodies were made at 2, 3, 5 times or even at 1 to 1 size and not just made with the body, that is, if this could be a rideable vehicle, let me show you a terrific example of this. A few months ago, an Instagram profile suddenly appeared. A junior builders, I saw they were making a life-size car with a 3D printer and it's a Supra. I immediately started following. I began to eagerly await each of his posts and wonder what he would do in the next stage. There were requests for support as we approached the end after outlining the vehicle because this is a project where serious time and money have been spent. I immediately raised my hand and said, send me a piece too. Let's get to work right away. It just so happened that I was starting the CRM4 project and I had the chance to produce a real size car part. Time was limited, I didn't have enough materials at that moment, I started to use everything I had piece by piece, that's why the pieces you see became a bit colorful. But it's really nice, I still liked it. It was a very great project for me to test CRM4. First of all, the parts are spread over wide surfaces. This would give me an idea about the leveling system. Because one of the biggest problems with printers that have a large printing area is bed leveling issues. However, here the device's sturdy metal body and dual linear rail keep the printing plate extremely stable. The CR touch system is a measurement method we are familiar with and the result is very good. I did not encounter bed leveling problems in the printings. The first layer turned out nice. The second important point was these were long pieces and I was wondering if there would be a swing as we came towards the top. Would there be distortions on the surface? However, I didn't encounter any problems either on the top surfaces or the bottom ones. In fact, I can say it's quite good for a device of this size. There were some layer trail on the car model but none on this one. There was some cracking between layers at certain points because it only utilized a very thin outer wall and little infill, but only at a few points. I also change colors a lot. As you can see, there's quite a transition from yellow to red, from red to black. The reason for this was a bit of the following. I wanted to finish the less filaments first. I'll use the more ones while I'm sleeping at night. Of course, sometimes I have something to do. I go outside. I'm putting the excess filament back in. When it comes, I spend it again like before. I struggled a lot. The beautiful point here was that there was not the slightest trace of a layer in so much change. Indeed, the changes occurred flawlessly. Anyway, I finished the printings, combined them with tape, and contributed to a big project, even if it was small. The printings reached their owner. First they glued the parts together, then they moved on to the putty sanding processes. I'm only talking about my parts processes. I know they've definitely dealt with tasks much more difficult than getting the printing of the car to work indeed. The project is approaching its conclusion. Preparations were being made for the paint while I was getting ready for the video. I want to share the info I got from the project owner with you. 650 kilo filament was used for its printing. There are nearly 500 parts in the vehicle of which I only did the printing for 5 parts and with the production time, adjustments and assembly it took a year. An electric motor was used in the vehicle. It can reach a speed of 60 kilo and has a range of 120 kilo. I hope the project will be completed soon and we can all see its final form together. I would like to express my gratitude to junior builders for including me in this project and allowing me to utilize their videos. The project owner also mentioned this several times. In fact, my purpose here is to demonstrate what can be done with various 3D printers. I think this project was a great example as he specifically wanted. As I said at the beginning, the big printer of big projects. Indeed, even in that five-piece job in this project, it definitely made my printing process quite easy. This could definitely be done with printers that have a 20-30 cm printing area, but the number of pieces would increase a lot. It would then become difficult to combine them. I printed another car part with this printer. It's the fog light frame of a car I did a 3D scan of. This is not such a big piece, of course, but it was great that it could be printed in one piece. Don't mind me saying it's not big. We're talking about a piece of 42-43 centimeters. If I didn't have CRM4 in my hand, my printer with the largest printing area was Creality K1 Max. It also has a printing area of 30 centimeters. Even with that, I must split it into two pieces. This type of pass-through products always cause problems in multi-part production. Because you glue it, putty it, paint it and so on, but if the joints flex a bit while installing, it can cause cracking or breaking. Therefore, it can be advantageous to make some vehicle parts in this way as a single piece. And here we are at my latest project. You might have noticed I shared a time-lapse video at the beginning of the video. My chair changed while I was shooting the video. Because I wanted to produce an item of a truly usable size with this giant printer. I got my chair from Ikea years ago.
It wasn't hard to find its 3D model on the internet because it's a famous brand. It wasn't flawless, but it was quite similar to its original structure. Every print I got with this printer was actually indeed like a new challenge from different angles, a new and tough test. Because this chair model had a surface that almost completely covered the entire plate as the main part. It was an ideal printing for the control of the leveling. Again, I got a very successful result. There are lines that have formed at one or two points, but it is not considered to be a problem. Considering the printing area of CRM4, it's clear that very long-term printings will be taken. Therefore, it has an 800 wattiet industrial type power unit in the printer, a large and powerful Y-axis motor, and linear rails that can even carry a load of 30 kilo that may occur on it. Creality claims that this printer can work non-stop for 720 hours, which is 30 days. I couldn't run 720 hours, but in this printing I broke my own record by printing continuously for 4 days. The main body printing took a full 92 hours. This is not a prototype. Since I do a printing generally focused on direct use, the thicknesses and infill ratio are quite high. Before taking the printing of the main body and armrests, I had carefully, meticulously and thoroughly drilled holes in the sides of the model to strengthen the joints. I wanted to reinforce the places where I put my arms so that they wouldn't stretch and separate from where they stick. I did it very well, but apparently I drilled holes in the wrong places. Probably that small piece in the front misled me dimensionally. I think I took the measure of the other after cutting it. Anyway, there's nothing to do. Now let me ensure chair integrity by gluing the pieces together. I made the bottom and top thicknesses close to half a centimeter. Since I weigh 75 kilo, it should carry me and this thickness was necessary because a bolt will be attached to the bottom. I also added a thin piece of MDF to the chair's bottom. So even though I did a really solid job of printing the model, I actually aim to distribute the weight better and the final step is to make the chair sittable. I struggled a bit with this part. It even pushed me harder than I expected because probably there were slight shifts in the holes I marked and opened by hand which made it particularly difficult to fit the back part. Anyway, I changed the bolts. I forced it a bit to the right and left and finally got what I wanted. When I put it side by side with the original and look at it, I'm satisfied with the result I get. As you can see, this is quite a colorful model. The reason is the same as with the car part. It stems from both utilizing the filaments I have on hand and saving the excess filaments for night printing. In this work, where the printing lasted more than 140 hours in total and I used nearly 6.5 kilograms of filament, I changed the filament 34 times and only encountered a surface problem at one point. Another problem I experienced was due to the model lifting a bit from the plate. I trusted the build plate's adhesion a lot because it holds the filament quite well. It could even be said that it's hard to separate PTG while printing. That's why I didn't apply glue thinking it would be hard to remove. And one corner lifted. This also had some impact on the top surface of the printing. At least if I applied a little bit of glue to the corner parts, this wouldn't be a problem. Apart from that, I'm satisfied with the printing quality and the outcome. I was able to achieve the result I wanted without major problems for such a long time. So with these types of printers that have a large printing area, you can really produce usable items. This can be a table, a chair, a couch, a coffee table, a wall decoration, a lighting fixture. Of course, it's not necessary to always produce usable products. You do a 3D modeling on your computer and you want to see a prototype of this before production. Well, these types of printers give you what you want at this point. I would like to set aside the projects and briefly share my experiences about the printer. Frankly, I was afraid the printer might tire me, but it didn't happen like that. I touched the leveling at two points. I liked this. It was much better than I expected. It has a solid body structure. This is felt in such large printings. There's no such vibration, oscillation or anything. Of course, CRM4 is not a fast printer. Its build plate is movable. It has a Cartesian system and you can't get fast printings with a 3D printer that has such a large printing area. If you have a speed expectation from the printer, look at different 3D printers. Because if you speed up too much on such a device, the motors start to strain. There are gear jumps in the belts, and this affects the layers. The device has a speed of 120 mm per second, but my advice to you is not to exceed 70-80 mm per second in your printing. PTG and PLA performance is very good indeed, especially sufficient for prints that will be processed afterwards. Better results can be obtained with a 0.8 mm nozzle at 0.5 or 0.6 mm layer thicknesses. It's likely that you'll frequently encounter stringing issues simply because its cooling is weak. 
You can try using glue on ABS filaments or Creality's body closure units such as these. This can be preferable in this regard. It's nice to have wireless connectivity. It's possible to track the printer from your computer with Creality Print or from your phone with Creality Cloud. It is also possible to integrate Creality's camera optionally and observe the printings remotely or shoot time-lapse videos. CRM4 is not a very new model, but there is still no other competitor in the market with this printing area. There are some coming up, but not like this. Printers with a larger printing area are now entering the industrial type, and the prices are also skyrocketing. When you evaluate the printing area and its features, it still seems as if it still stands alone at one point. But it doesn't just stand alone with its features, it's a seriously large printer. Considering the forward and backward movement of the build plate, I would recommend you to think about its place when you get the printer. I wanted to show you some various and interesting examples made with 3D printers from different sectors and different usage areas. The primary reason I did all this was to give you some additional details and thoughts and ideas about what can be done with 3D printers. I hope this has been a useful video for you and that I have achieved my goal. I would appreciate it if you could share with me in the comments how you found this video and the printer. May your printer be trouble-free, your printing's flawless. See you in the next video. Goodbye.